Music production is creative, but we could also use technical and scientific research to help us solve problems. So if you've been struggling with the low end of your mixes, stick around as we dive into the science of mixing perfect kick and bass. By the end of the video, I guarantee you'll have a lot more control over this difficult to mix range. But before we start, if you want to get your mixes to sound like professional songs, I encourage you to check out our mixing and mastering membership. Just for signing up, you'll receive 10 free mastered songs per month with your own dedicated mastering engineer, unlimited mixing feedback, and access to Sage Audio University for in-depth mixing and mastering educational courses. But more on that at the end of the video. So let's start by talking about phasing issues in the low frequency range. Now simply put, the low frequency range is harder to mix because of the physics of sound waves. Whereas higher frequencies have multiple oscillations within a short distance, Low frequencies have incredibly long waveforms. For example, 40 Hz has a wavelength of almost 30 feet, which explains why when people put subwoofers in their cars, they still can't hear the bass as loud as we can from outside the car. They're too close to the subwoofer for the waveform to fully travel. But it's when we combine the physical nature of waveforms with our perception of them that we really run into problems. Now, people perceive notes as being separate not by their exact frequency, but by the ratio of their respective frequencies. This ratio is 1.06. Now, in other words, a 6% change in the frequency is what's needed for us to hear these frequencies as two individual notes. For example, if I play the note A4, which has a frequency of 440 hertz, and multiply that by 1.06, we get 466. Now guess what the frequency of A sharp 4 is? If you guessed 466 hertz, you're totally right. But what does this have to do with the lows? Well, let's look at the note E1, which has a frequency of 41.2 hertz. Multiplied by 1.06, the next note that we could perceive is at 43.6 hertz. So in the low mids or with like A4 and A sharp 4, we have 26 hertz in between the two notes. But here we only have 2.4 hertz. Although we could hear these as separate notes just fine, Physics really doesn't like having these two notes present at the same time. Playing both results in significant destructive interference in which the two waveforms periodically overlap in a way that causes complete phase cancellation. Now, if you've ever heard of binaural beats, this is how they're made. Listen, and you're gonna notice this beating sound that occurs at a constant rate. So this is all interesting, but how could we use this info? Well, the first way we can improve our mixes actually comes from composition. So say I have a kick drum and its fundamental is E1. Then the bass hits an F1 note at the same time as the kick. In this situation, we're guaranteed to have phase cancellation in the lows, making mixing them incredibly difficult. But what if the kick hits E1 and the bass plays F2 instead? Already, we've greatly improved the low end by reducing phase cancellation. Building on this idea, let's say the kick drum has an overtone, and it's F sharp 2. Now this means we have E1, F2, and F sharp 2 playing at the same time. Now F sharp 2 will likely interfere with F2, which again, is the bass's fundamental. Now I definitely don't want the bass's fundamental to have periodic phase cancellation, so what I could do is attenuate this overtone on the kick with EQ. And this kind of brings me to my next point, which is we can combine processing with composition. Now processing and the music being processed are inherently linked, and with particular processors we could shape this relationship between notes and instruments to our advantage, which we just saw with EQ. So same example, the kick's fundamental is E1, and it has an overtone of F sharp 2, which we just attenuated with EQ. But what if we could change the kick's harmonics? Well, that's why we have saturators. They generate harmonics, or multiples of the fundamental frequency. So now, instead of the kick that has an overtone at F sharp 2, I could generate a harmonic at E3. Not only does this E3 note interfere with the bass's fundamental less than F sharp 2, but it also sounds more musical, since it's directly related to the kick's fundamental. Here, take a listen, and notice how the two instruments already sound more distinct. With what we just said in mind, let's talk about high frequencies of the kick and the bass. 
Now, we don't think about the kick and the bass as having high frequencies, but at the very least, they have significant presence in the mids and often the high mids. Again, we could use this to our advantage when we're mixing them. As we discussed, the gap between frequency ranges in the mids and the high mids is much larger than in the lows. This means if we accentuate or amplify the high frequencies of the kick and the bass, they become much more distinct due to significantly less phase cancellation in these ranges. Now, this is why I often recommend using exciters on the kick and the bass. It adds harmonics, just like a saturator does, but it measures the fundamental as being higher in frequency. This means the harmonics that it introduces are also higher in frequency. Subsequently, we amplify the high ranges of the kick and the bass, causing increased distinction between the instruments and, again, a lower ratio of phase cancellation to the relevant signal. Not only can we introduce high-order harmonics with exciters, but we could also emphasize the harmonics in the overtones that are already present with transient expanders. The majority of high frequencies in a kick and a bass occur within the first roughly 50 milliseconds of it being hit or plucked or during the signal's attack and decay. By introducing a mild transient expander, we amplify these frequencies again, increasing the distinction between these two instruments. So if you combine the ideas here and you monitor the relationship between your kick and your bass, or whichever low frequency instruments you have, you'll find that the lows become a much easier range to mix. And as I mentioned earlier, if you want to get your mixes to sound like professional songs, I encourage you to check out our mixing and mastering membership. Just for signing up, you receive 10 free mastered songs per month with your own dedicated mastering engineer, unlimited mixing feedback, and access to Sage Audio University mixing and mastering courses, which includes start to finish walkthrough sessions for various genres and 35 multi-track sessions for hands-on practice. This interconnected platform is supported by our thriving community and tight-knit network of audio engineers. Every day, we see and we hear great wins in the membership from both new and seasoned engineers, noticing a huge improvement in their mixes and masters after joining. Right now, you could join the membership with a lifetime 70% discount, bringing the cost down to just $15 per month. So join today and start creating mixes that sound like professionally mixed and mastered songs.